So good morning and welcome to St. Christopher's Church in the parish of Luton, St. Anne with St. Christopher. Those of you here in person and those of you with us online. I'm Reverend Anne and I am the vicar here in the parish and particularly today in St. Christopher's Church. Diane Scott, our lay reader, is with us and together we will lead you in morning prayer. We will be using our Red Church of England prayer books and we will begin on page 238. If you don't have a copy of the book, that's okay. You can find the service on the Church of England website or on the Daily Prayer app. And today, as we are journeying through morning prayer, today the Church of England remembers the uh, Edward King, Bishop of Lincoln, in 1910 and so his ministry and the ministry for the people of Lincoln is very much where our thoughts are today and so we pause still our hearts and knowingly draw ourselves into God's presence and so using our prayer books I will say the words that are in ordinary type and I invite you to join in the words in bold. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And so we continue antiphonally. I will say the odd verses Please join with the even-numbered verses. Have, Have mercy me. on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So that you are justified in your sentence, and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory, Glory to, to the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so we turn to page 711 for Psalm 44, and that's with the green tab. We join together in the refrain, and wherever the R appears in the book, I will say the odd verses. Please join in antiphonally with the even-numbered verses. Rise, Rise up, up O Lord, Lord, to, to help, help us. We have heard with our ears, O God, our forebears have told us all that you did in their days, in time of old. 
how with your hand you drove out nations and planted us in and broke the power of peoples and set us free. For not by their own sword did our ancestors take the land, nor did their own arm save them. But your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, because you were gracious to them. Rise, Rise up, up, O Lord, Lord to, to help, help us. us. You are my King and my God, who commanded salvation for Jacob. Our adversaries, through your name we trod down our foes. For I did not trust in my bow, it was not my own sword that saved me. It was you that saved us from our enemies and put our adversaries to shame. We gloried in God all the day long and were ever praising your name. Rise, Rise up, up, O Lord, Lord to, to help us. us. But now you have rejected us and brought us to shame and go not out with our armies. You have made us turn our backs on our enemies, and our enemies have despoiled us. You have made us like sheep to be slaughtered, and have scattered us among the nations. You have sold your people for a pittance, and made no profit on their sale. You have made us the taunt of our neighbours, the scorn and derision of those that are round about us. You have made us a byword among the nations. Among the peoples, they wag their heads. Rise, Rise up, up, O Lord, Lord to, to help us. us. My confusion is daily before me, and shame has covered my face. At the taunts of the slanderer and reviler, at the sight of the enemy and avenger. All this has come upon us, though we have not forgotten you and have not played false to your covenant. Our hearts have not turned back, nor our steps gone out of your way. Yet you have crushed us in the haunt of jackals and covered us with the shadow of death. If we have forgotten the name of our God or stretched out our hands to any strange God, will not God search it out for he knows the secrets of the heart. But for your sake, we are killed all the day long and count, are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Rise, Rise up, up, O Lord, Lord to, to help us. us. Rise up, why sleep, O Lord? Awake and do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and forget our grief and oppression? Our soul is bowed down to the dust. Our belly cleaves to the earth. Rise up, O Lord, to help us and redeem us for the sake of your steadfast love. Rise, Rise up, up, O Lord, Lord to, to help, help us. Let us pray. In the darkness of unknowing, when your love seems absent, draw near to us, O God, in Christ forsaken, in Christ risen, our Redeemer and our Lord. And so we turn back to page 239. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. We hear now the first of our readings from Holy Scripture this morning, coming from the book of Genesis. We begin at um, chapter 41, verse 46. Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And Joseph went, Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went through all the land of Egypt. 
During the seven plenteous years, the earth produced abundantly. He gathered up all the food of the seven years when there was plenty in the land of Egypt and stored up food in the cities. He stored up in every city the, field, the food from fields around it. So Joseph stored up grain in such abundance, like the sand of the sea, that he stopped measuring it. It was beyond measure. Before the years of famine came, Joseph had two sons, whom Asenath, daughter of Potiphera, priest of On, bore to him. Joseph named the firstborn Manasseh, for he said, God has made me forget all my hardship and all my father's house. The second he named Ephraim, for God has made me fruitful in the land of my misfortunes. The seven years of plenty that prevailed in the land of Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began to come, just as Joseph had said. There was famine in every country, but throughout the land of Egypt there was bread. When all the land of Egypt was famish, famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph. What he says to you, do. And since the famine had spread all over the land, Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians, for the famine was severe in the land of Egypt. Moreover, all the world came to Joseph in Egypt to buy grain because the famine became severe throughout the world. When Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, why do you keep looking at one another? I have heard, he said, that there is grain in Egypt. Go down and buy grain for us there, that we may live and not die. So 10 of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt. But Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he feared that harm might come to him. Thus the sons of Israel were among the other people who came to buy grain, for the famine had reached the land of Canaan. So we return to our prayer book on page 240. So again, where the yellow tab is, you might just need to turn the page over. <coughs> and so we say together, and then again antiphonally, full, full of, of compassion, compassion and, and mercy and, and love is God the Most High, the Almighty. Lord Almighty and God of our ancestors, you have made heaven and earth in all their glory. All things tremble with awe at your presence before your great and mighty power. Immeasurable and unsearchable is your promised mercy, for you are God most high. You are full of compassion long-suffering and very merciful, and you relent at human suffering. O God, according to your great goodness, you have promised forgiveness for repentance to those who have sinned against you. The sins I have committed against you are more in number than the sands of the sea. I am not worthy to look up to the height of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. And now I bend the knee of my heart before you, imploring your kindness upon me. I have sinned, O God, I have sinned, and I acknowledge my transgressions. Unworthy as I am, you will save me, according to your great mercy. For all the host of heaven sings your praise and your glory is for ever and ever. Glory, glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. 
full of compassion and mercy and love, is God the Most High, the Almighty. second reading from Holy Scripture comes from the letter of Paul to the Galatians, chapter 4, beginning at verse 8. Formerly, when you did not know God, you were enslaved to beings that by nature are not God's. Now, however, that you have come to know God, or rather to be known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and beggarly elemental spirits? How can you want to be enslaved to them again? You are observing special days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid that my work for you may have been wasted. Friends, I beg you, become as I am. For I also have become as you are. You have done me no wrong. You know that it was because of a physical infirmity that I first announced the gospel to you. Though my condition put you to the test, you did not scorn or despise me, but welcomed me as an angel of God, as Christ Jesus. What has become of the goodwill you felt for I testify that, had it been possible, you would have torn out my eyes and given them to me. Have I now become your enemy by telling you the truth? They make much of you, but for no good purpose. They want to exclude you, so that you may make much of them. It is good to be made much of for a good purpose at all times, and not only when I am present with you. My little children, for whom I am again in the pain of childbirth until Christ is formed in you, I wish I were present with you now and could change my tone, for I am perplexed about you. And so we return to our prayer book on page 241. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope all the day long. O oh my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love for they are from everlasting. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. If you're able, I encourage you to stand for our gospel canticle. Blessed are, are those who, who hunger and thirst for righteousness, righteousness for, for they, they shall, shall be satisfied. satisfied. Again, we'll say it intifinally. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. To give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, 
and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory Glory to to the the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Please do be seated. We come to our time of intercessory prayer. And we begin by giving thanks for today, for all that today will hold, for all that we expect, and for all that surprises us. With God, we pray that in all things we are mindful of and recognize your presence with us, knowing ourselves to be completely loved by you. And so we pause and hold before our Heavenly Father just something that we know we will be doing today, giving thanks for it and handing it into God's care. We pray for the world pray for the people of Ukraine, for those who are staying, for those who are fleeing, for those who are fighting. We pray for Russia, for that invading army, for the governance of that country, and for an engagement from that governance with the governments of the world, that together a peaceful solution may be found a solution that enables Ukraine to be rebuilt, the people who've fleed to return, the people who've been fighting to lay down their arms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the rest of the world. For Lord, as much as our attention is focused on Ukraine and on Russia, there is so much more about your world that is in need of our prayer. And so we pray for the Middle East, for peace there. We pray for Syria, previously invaded by Russia. We pray for Central Australia under floods, for the people of this country who are recovering from the floods of those named storms. We give thanks that Queen Elizabeth II has been able to begin again her face-to-face meetings, having suffered from COVID. We pray for the people of Brazil, for all that they are facing, for those who were caught in that dreadful landslip. And so, Lord, we hold before you the needs of all in our world. Lord, in your mercy. And so we pray for the church. We pray today 
for Tajikistan on the world watch list as one of the most persecuted countries for Christians to live in. And so we pray for our brothers and sisters there that they may keep strong in the faith and know themselves to be prayed for around the world. In our USPG cycle of prayer today, on this International Women's Day, we pray for women across the world. May we celebrate women's achievements and continue to demand gender justice and equality. In our diocese, we pray for the transforming of communities that all places of worship in this diocese may help to transform the communities in which they are sited. In our own deanery today, we pray for this parish, it being the eighth of the month, that is where we pray. And so we pray for all that we do we pray for those who live in Abbotswood Road. For all that they are and all that they need. For those who visit and for those who pass through. In our own parish, we pray today for Gloria Forbes, Marilyn Gearing, Tony Godfrey, and Leslie Gregory. We pray for the education of our young people, for secondary schools, and for the early years provision. And we pray particularly for the preschool that meets here in St. Christopher's, and for Heart Hill Nursery. We pray for those in need, for those that we know are in need at this time, for any that we know who have fleed from the Ukraine, for their journeys. For their safety. for their concern about who they have left behind. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who are unwell at this time, for Elliot and Jeff, Maureen and Karen, Ian and Amelia, Jenny, Al, and Jane, Judy, Sue, and Liz, Bill, Sam, and John. May they know your healing touch, Lord. May they know your mercy on them. And may, may they be cared for by skilled practitioners. We pray for those who currently receive their communion at home, for Synth, Diana, Grace, and David, and for those who've died recently, Antonio Iacovoni, and for those whose anniversaries of death occur this week, John Hamilton. We pray for their families and friends, for all who mourn them. May they rest in peace. God of peace, who gave such grace to your servant Edward King, that whomever he met he drew to Christ. Fill us, we pray, 
with tender sympathy and joyful faith, that we also may win others to know the love that passes knowledge through him who is the shepherd and guardian of our souls, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so trusting in the compassion of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we conclude on page 243. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, one and all, for joining us this morning for morning prayer. The next time you can join with us to worship again will be at 12 noon at St. Anne's Church, and that will be for our time of We Pray Together, where we will say midday prayer and conclude with a time of vigil for the Ukraine. The next time you can come to St. Christopher's is tomorrow morning, and that will be for the Holy Eucharist at 10.30. You are welcome to join us in person or online for that. After that, we will be online on Thursday evening at 9 o'clock on Facebook for our, our service of Compline. So whenever we meet you again, look forward to seeing you and God bless you in the meantime. <laughs>